I'll be showing 11 new features in Teams for Education. This includes new generative AI updates like assignment instructions, rubric creation, and passage generation, a new way for students to do practice mode with quizzes, search progress updates, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is AI assignment instructions generation. I'm an educator signed into Teams, and I'm gonna choose Create at the bottom, and then I'll choose New Assignment. Here's the assignment form. Let's give it a quick title. A science project on photosynthesis, and we'll give some basic instructions. Science project on how photosynthesis works, some pretty lame instructions, but with the power of AI right here, I've got a bunch of options. Over on the right for settings, if I click here, you can set the grade level, or you can choose the language as well, and I'll show language a little bit later. Maybe I wanna set this to sixth grade right here, and now I can go click Add Detail. Let's see what happens. So AI is generating. If I wanna stop, I can click there. Okay, a nice science project. Introduction, material, procedures, and I can choose to keep this. I can regenerate. I can also give a little AI thumbs up or down. This sends data back to Microsoft to say, hey, this was good, or no, nah, that wasn't very good. In this case, I'll choose keep it. But I can go back and have other options. So I can do things like clarify concepts, emphasize key concepts. You know what, I wanna emphasize some key concepts here. Let's click that and see what happens. There goes AI. Oh, it's bolding certain concepts like this. All right, so now I've got lots of bold words. But you know, maybe I don't like that. I'm gonna say, you know, let's cancel that one. And in this case, I can go back and say, I wanna add learning objectives. And it's quickly added some learning objectives here. I'll choose to keep it. And you can explore all the other options, but I'm gonna show one of my favorites right here. I'm gonna add sparkle, add some emojis, make it a little more fun. Okay, a little emojis added, my little sparkle. I will choose to keep it. Now the last thing I'm gonna show is great for different languages. So I'm gonna click here, I can choose to set a language. Maybe I wanna have this go all in Norwegian. We'll choose Norwegian Bachmal right here. And now instead, I'm gonna say add detail. Look at that, it's added all the detail, but in this case, everything is in Norwegian. So I will choose to keep that. Assignment instructions is rolled out globally as of, as of May 13th, 2024, Assignment Instructions AI is 50% rolled out globally, and by May 16th, it should be fully rolled out, so if you're not seeing it quite yet, you will in a couple of days. The second new feature is AI-generated rubrics. So I've got my photosynthesis project here. I'll go and click Add Rubric. Now you can create a rubric from scratch that's existed. You can upload one, but in this case, I'm gonna choose to create a rubric using AI. So we'll give it a title. Set your language, we'll keep it at English, and what would you like this rubric to evaluate? Evaluate students on the quality and detail of this photosynthesis project. Pretty simple, hit next. What's the grade level? You have a bunch of choices right here. I'm gonna leave it at grade six. The rubric scale, you've got a couple of options here, excellent, fair, poor, meet standards, etc. What criteria will this rubric evaluate? Now you can enter your own, but AI also suggests a few for you. So you can have clarity of explanation, quality of visual representation, research and understanding of photosynthesis. You can add all, you could add new criteria, but we'll just leave it right here at these three, and I'll choose create rubric using AI. So AI is now going to fill out a draft of my rubric really quickly. Okay, here you go. It has excellent, good, fair, and poor. You can modify rubric using AI. You could regenerate, again, the thumbs up and thumbs down. If I wanted to add new criteria here, I can do that, and I can say fill out descriptions using AI. So criteria, application to the real world, and hit done. So now AI is gonna generate a new line right here and how it works with the real world or not. So really simple to do. And if I wanna modify the rubric using AI, I can go back, I can change grades, I can change languages, what do you want it to evaluate? You could even say concise versus expanded. So a lot of options. This is really a big time saver for educators. As of May 13th, this is about 50% rolled out globally, but by Thursday of next week, being around May 16th or 17th, this will be globally rolled out to everyone. So if you're not seeing it quite yet, stay tuned, it'll be there shortly. The third new feature is reading progress passage generation using AI. Reading Progress is our free reading fluency tool. It's built into Microsoft Teams. It's one of our learning accelerators right here. And I'm not gonna do a deep dive into all of Reading Progress. There's a link in the description if you wanna learn more about that. I'm gonna show the latest AI passage generation feature. 
So I'll click Learning Accelerators, and then I'm gonna choose Reading Progress. You're gonna see three buttons here, and the one in the middle is new. Historically, I could browse the sample library to choose a passage. I could import my own Word or PDF document. I could pull from Class Notebook or Teams or upload. But many educators want to be able to use a little help in generating their own tailored passages and personalized. I'll choose Generate Reading Passage. Now here's the dialog. I can choose a topic, anything from arts to animals to geography, health, sports. We'll choose animals. You can choose the length of the passage. Maybe I want this to be 200 words. The age range, lots of different options. We're gonna have an age range of nine. And you can choose a language. We've got many different languages that we support. I will choose English. The other nice thing is that you can pull in the challenging words from your class. So if you've used reading progress, we know from our AI what words the students struggled with when reading out loud. And we'll pull in the most challenging words already right here for you to select. So maybe I wanna uncheck this one and uncheck that one. And I'd like to have these three words put into this AI generated passage. So I'm gonna click generate reading passage. So very quickly it generated a passage about animals. The other nice thing is I can choose complexity. I can make it a little more complex or a little less complex. So you know, I wanna make this slightly more complicated. I'll click the complexity up and it's gonna regenerate that passage and make it just a little bit harder. So there we go. I could go back down again, back to where I was before, or I could say, you know, I wanna make it a little bit less complex and hit the down arrow. So now my passage is ready to go. I'll click use passage. And now I have a passage right there in reading progress, ready to go and assigned to my students. Reading progress passage generation has globally rolled out and is available to every educator on earth today. The fourth new feature is comprehension questions for reading progress generated with AI. I have my passage here as an educator and this pane on the right gives me all my options. We've had the option for adding comprehension questions right here, but now when I turn this on to yes, I can choose to generate questions with AI. So I can add my own manually, or I can click generate questions. So let's click this, and it's gonna ask me how many questions would I like to generate. I'm gonna say I want four questions, and I'll hit next. Now AI is gonna analyze the passage over here on the left, and using forms technology, it's gonna generate a set of questions. So here we go, it generates some questions, it highlights what's the correct answer. I can scroll down and there's a couple more questions and it's a mix of true, false, multiple choice or fill in the blank. And what's nice is you can go and edit and change these. So I might wanna change this question, maybe I wanna move it down in the list, I can do that just like in forms. Maybe I wanna delete this question. So you can choose to do whatever you want. And when you're done, you can click in the lower right, expand the pane so you can get back into here if you wanna change anything else. And now you just hit next and your assignment in reading progress is ready to go. This AI comprehension generation is also rolled out globally for all educators who use Teams. The fifth new feature is reflect integration directly into Teams assignments. So I'm gonna switch over to assignments here as an educator and I will click Create and choose New Assignment. We're gonna make this a nice reading progress assignment. Okay, the assignment is attached. I've got my date set up here, the due date, it's going to my whole class. I'm gonna set the number of points, 100 points, and here is the new option, Reflect Check-in, and I will turn this on. And if you wanna see a preview of what that's gonna look like for your students, just click Preview. So this will pop up on the student side. How are you feeling about this assignment? And they can choose whichever one they want. They'll be able to pick a feelings monster and they'll be able to submit that. And so this is just a preview. I'll close this. Now what I'm gonna do is push this assignment out by clicking assign. Now we're gonna switch over to the student and show what it looks like on his end. I'm signed in as Alex the student and here's my reading progress assignment. Let's say that I've finished it and I'm all done. Now in the upper right, I'm just gonna click turn in. Now, because there was a reflect check-in turned on, I get this pop-up. So how are you feeling about this assignment? Let's say Alex is feeling pretty good. He's feeling motivated. He chooses this feelings monster right here. If you've seen before, you can explore lots of other feelings monsters. So in this case, maybe someone's feeling frustrated or anxious about the homework. So this is really nice in that you can capture all this information about your students and how they're feeling about a specific assignment. Maybe it's stressed. So I will click submit. Great, now as a student, I'm all done, we'll close this. Now we're gonna speed ahead and pretend that a couple other folks have turned in their assignments as well, and we're gonna flip back to the educator. Now I'm signed back in as the educator, and I've switched over to assignments, and here's that reading progress assignment that I've made. So let's open this up. 
Now I can see some people have not turned it in, but a couple of people have turned it in. And what's really interesting is I can go to reflect together mode right here, and that's a new option. If I click this, I can quickly see how people are feeling about this assignment. In this case, hmm, this person is feeling stressed, Alex Wilbur, and Ella, oh, she's feeling overwhelmed. Going back to Alex, what's nice that you can see is previous responses, bored, optimistic, calm. And so imagine when your whole class shows up here, you will get interesting information about how they're feeling about that assignment. And Reflect and Insights can also track this over time. So if you're giving assignments where people are on the most part feeling stressed or overwhelmed, that's great feedback that you're getting about your class. Or it could just be certain individuals who are feeling that way. And Reflect gives you all that information. What's also nice, in this student list, we'll open up Alex right here. Reflect is also integrated over on the right-hand side. So here's his Reflect check-in. It shows his stress. I can even view the trend in real time. So if I click this, here's a nice trend of Alex. He's been both bored and stressed as his top emotions. And you'll be able to see different mood trends over time for specific students. The sixth new feature is the ability to reuse classwork modules. This has been a top request from educators. So I've got a brand new fresh class team here that I've set up. And let's say it's the beginning of the semester or the beginning of the school year. I want to import all my existing classwork modules that I've used before to save time so I don't have to recreate everything. First, go to classwork. Now down at the bottom, click add module. And you can choose reuse from existing. I'll choose this. I'm going to select my algebra class that I had set up in the past, and I'll hit next. And it has a set of modules that I've already created. I can select one at a time, or I can just choose all modules. And if you have a really long list, you could search as well. So I've got all modules selected, and I'm going to click to reuse. Now it's going to start importing all my assignments, my links, my OneNote class notebook pages and assignments. It's going to pull all those things right in here, and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Okay, everything has been copied in. You can see right there. I can reorder these if I want. Unit one, unit two, unit three. This has three assignments, two notebook sections, and one link. I'll expand unit one. And here are all the pieces of content for my other algebra class. And you can see the assignments are automatically in the draft state right here. My YouTube video link is here. Even my OneNote pages or sections that I used as assignments, those are here as well, and they're copied into my class notebook. So this is a huge time saver. Notice that it's not published. Everything is in draft form. So it's really easy to just go in and you can tweak and change and then publish your new classwork modules. The seventh new feature is practice mode for quizzes and Teams assignments. This has been in standalone forms and now it's been brought into quizzes as well. So as an educator, I will click create and choose new quiz. Now I'll choose add quiz. And in the upper right, I'll hit the three dot menu and I want to let my students go into practice mode on this quiz so they can practice questions they might have struggled with. Choose settings and there's this new option practice mode. Turn that on. Now I'm just going to show briefly on the educator side what this looks like. You can try it in demo mode. So I will launch demo right here. So try a demo. First, we're going to answer the correct question right here. So it says, what animal leaps out of the water to communicate with others of its kind? Click whale. And I'll click Submit. Woohoo! That's excellent. We'll go to the next question. Now it says Submit an incorrect answer. Which of these land animals moves the most slowly? And turtle might sound good. I'll hit Submit. Oh, that one wasn't right. Now I could skip it. I could show the correct answer or I could try it again. So maybe I'll choose Snail and choose Submit. All right, that one was correct. Hit Next. And the last one, which bamboo eating bear has a baby that weighs less than an apple? I'll hit polar bear, hit submit. Oh, that one wasn't right. Show the correct answer, panda bear. So you can create quizzes that let students practice when they get things wrong. It's a great new mode to try out as an educator. The eighth new feature is support for international domains in search progress, one of our newest learning accelerators. So I'm going to hit create here and I will choose new assignment. And I'll go to Learning Accelerators and I will choose Search Progress. Search Progress and Search Coach are our brand new learning accelerators. And these help with information literacy and helping students practice searching and discerning sources and information on the internet. Really powerful in today's era. I will choose Search Progress here. And just like our other learning accelerators, as the educator, I can set up this assignment. Now, if you want to see the details on how Search Coach and Search Progress work together, I've got a separate video. The link is in the description as well as in the upper right. 
Now the feature I'm going to show is the ability to show international domains. This has been a top request. So for example, if I go to domain here and I'm going to customize this as the educator, I can choose edit in class settings. By default, we have .gov and .edu. These are United States and American focused domains. For example, if I'm in the UK, I might not want to have these domains as normal search terms as I'm practicing with search coach. So I will edit in class settings. And right here, you can see I can add and delete different institutions. So we're going to hit plus. Now in the UK, for research institutions, they use .ac.uk. So I'm going to add that here. And then we'll give it a description. Those are UK academic institutions. Now let's say I want to delete .gov and .edu because I'm not in the US and I don't care as much about those. So now it's just going to have this option and I'll hit save. And now we'll hit apply. And you can see .ac.uk, it's right here for institutional domains. Now when students open this up, I can go here to student view. This shows what will the students see. They'll see this experience. And when they drop down domain, they're going to see .ac.uk. Now, for example, if I just want to focus on .ac.uk, you can see it adds site colon ac.uk. And I'm going to give it a search term. Oxford Research on Cancer. And I just want to look at UK institutions. And I'll hit go. And what the student will see is it's all filtered by UK. You can see the location there. And here are all these .ac.uk research. This makes it very easy to focus on international domains that you care most about. The other nice thing is if you go down and expand on more and you want to learn about what are the different country domains around the world, if you click find more country and regional domains, it'll launch you right to our site that shows you all of them. Here's an example right here, all the different country codes for you to explore. The ninth new feature is also in search progress and it lets the educator customize how search coach is going to look before the assignment is sent out. So if I go into customize search coach here, maybe I want to choose this background. Then I go to filters. Maybe I want to turn on the fact check button. We'll turn that on. And let's say I want to turn off date range and operators. So I've customized how that bar is going to look. Now I'll hit apply. You can see that these buttons are disabled. The fact check button is right there. And I've got this nice background. So you can customize this before it gets sent out to your students. The tenth new feature is improvements for citations with APA support and copying your sources. And this is if you're a student. I'm a student here and I have my assignment and that's all about reforestation with drone research. So I'm going to open up search progress. Now as a student, I have my assignment instructions right here and I need four sources and I have not saved any yet. So I'm going to start doing my research and quickly find a source. Okay, so I have my results and I'm going to open up an article. Let's see, this one looks interesting. Okay, so I've got this web page right here and I'm going to go back into Search Coach as a student and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose the plus and I'm going to save this as a source and it adds it right here. And I'm going to give a reason why I saved this source. Now, if I click Add Citation, it's going to pop this up and I can drop down and choose a bunch of options. So in this case, I'm going to choose News Article. I can give the author name, the title, the date published, and the site name. Okay, I've added all the information about my source. I will hit save and close. And now it has citation added. I have this information here. Now we're going to speed ahead and pretend that the student has finished this assignment and hit next. Now as a student, this has all my information aggregated, my assignment summary, my searches, and everything else, but the summary of sources is here as well. This copy as button is the new feature. I can copy all the citations with a single click. So it copies it to the clipboard and I can go into Word and paste this really easy. I can also drop this down and just choose the list of sources. And same thing, this is automatically copied to the clipboard and I can paste into Word or other places. The 11th new feature is support for search progress and coach on mobile. So I'm a student here and I'm going to open up search progress. This is on my iPhone. Now you can see the entire experience. So I can do things like choose a domain filter, scroll down, all the same functionality that you see in a web browser or desktop, but now you can use this on mobile. And this can be iPhone, iPad, Android, doesn't matter. I'll hit go here on my little search. I get all the same results here. You can see it's just formed for the mobile phone. Choose a citation. Tap the little assignments there. You have all the citation information. So this fully works on mobile now as well. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.